Okay, lastly now, we want to take a look at the app start. And we want to understand how long our application takes to load. So here is the transactions which have metrics for app start, for cold and warm. Let's just click on this one here. And I just want to click on the recent ones and take a look at this one. Again, for an iOS application, this will be an way too slow because our application is almost doing anything and it needs almost a second to launch. So this would be really bad, but on a real device, it takes around 70 milliseconds. So it would be fine. I have all these spans here that I was talking before about before. And the cool thing now is here is where distributed traces comes into place. So as we had a span here for this HTTP request, like Bruno said before, we add, we add an uh, HTTP header, a century specific HTTP header. This gets passed along to the backend. And as the backend is a Java backend, has also the Sentry SDK installed. It's just picking up that trace header and sends that information to Sentry. So we get those true transact transactions, Sentry and Tree. And Sentry then just do, does the magic and puts those two things together to a trace. So here I am in my iOS with view controller. I can click on view full trace and I see the transaction that's happening on the back end. I can just click on this, say, say uh, if you can click on view, contract, view transaction and I see what's happening here on the back end. And I can immediately, I don't know, say, okay, this is, this is not looking good. I can go over to the back end guys and tell them, hey, come on, fix this. I even see here that an error happened, which is also pretty cool. Um, for every SDK, when an error is happening during a transaction, you get a link so we can directly navigate uh, to the error from the transaction. Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to click here. So here I see the exception happening in Java. And also this issue here has a link back to my initial uh, view controller uh, transaction.